Bill Greenman. Uh, today's hearing is about the uh, oversight of the Drug Enforcement Agency's Confidential Source Program. And one of the most important tasks that our government has is to keep us safe. And there are a number of ways, there are a number of different agencies that this is done. Uh, we employ a number of tools to gather information, including uh, human intelligence, human sources. And the Drug Enforcement Agency is one agency that uses these human sources to gather information on the illegal drug trafficking. While the nation is uh, suffering through one of the deepest uh, and, and most uh, horrific opioid uh, epidemics, uh, the, uh, the work done by the DA is very important. There are thousands of really good men and women who put their lives on the line to do very important work, work that is furthered by confidential informants on a daily basis. Yet the DEA has struggled with the management of its confidential source program. The American people through Congress have appropriated uh, millions of dollars to help them do their jobs and get the information that they need. But back in 2005, the Inspector General called for the DEA to improve its oversight by monitoring of its confidential sources in several areas. Specifically, the Inspector General reported the agency failed to properly track its confidential sources, resulting in paying sources well after they provided to be useful. So here we are about a decade, use, uh, decade later, and here is the big fear. The DEA wasn't listening, and they didn't implement. And if they did, at least based on this report, they did an exceptionally poor job. So, according to the uh, Inspector General, between fiscal year 2010 and 2015, the DEA had more than 18,000 confidential sources in the United States. But these, aren't, these sources don't necessarily give up the goods for free. They want something in return. From 2010 to 2015, the DEA paid some $237 million to 9,000, or roughly half of its confidential sources. The average payment per source is roughly $26,000. When an agency is spending taxpayer dollars, it must get the most bang for the buck. We ask these men and women to make uh, decisions on what the costs of these types of informants might be. The DEA, according to the Inspector General, paid 477, quote, limited use sources, end quote, that the DEA, DEA deemed as relatively low risk an estimated $26.8 million. That is an average payment of more than $56,000 to sources who were supposed to be providing information to the DEA on a limited and voluntary basis without direction from the DEA. However, it turned out that many of these tipsters were actually working on behalf or in partnership with DEA agents. Other findings from the Inspector General's report, this one just bugs me to no end. The DEA paid $1.5 million to Amtrak and TSA sources for information they could have gotten for free by going through the proper law enforcement channels. In fact, in one case, the DEA paid one Amtrak employee, a United States government employee, $854,460 over 20 years just for sending passenger name records along. $854,000 this person took, one person from Amtrak. The DEA's records were so bad that the Inspector General couldn't determine whether the sources were paid were being reliable. The DEA paid more than $9 million to old informants that were no longer considered active, despite a policy against paying deactivated informants. The DEA provided federal benefits, including workers' comp, to confidential sources with no process or controls on how these benefits were awarded. And finally, the DEA was uncooperative with the Inspector General throughout much of the investigation. Nothing but nothing will frustrate Congress more than limited access by the, for the Inspector General. You know, we're, I say this almost every day now. We are different in the United States of America. We are different. We are self-critical. We do look under the hood. We do have people come in and audit things. We do it in the spirit of making things better. There is no reason that I can think of that the DEA should ever hold any information back from the Inspector General's office, and I want to hear the answer to that. Um, it is just terribly frustrating, and it is wrong. 
The Department of Justice Inspector General also pointed out another boondoggle by the DEA in a joint venture with the Department of Defense. The purpose of the 2008 program was to procure and modify an aircraft for surveillance operations in Afghanistan in 2012. After eight years and millions of dollars wasted, at la the last report, uh, the plane sits in Delaware, inoperable, resting on jacks. The program has resulted in the government paying $86 million, four times what it was supposed to, for a plane that was supposed to be ready in 2012, and it's still not flying. In fact, it's projected to be ready in 2017 and will never fly the mission it was intended for originally in Afghanistan. Despite the program's delay and expanding budget, 14 senior managers, and this is what, you, again, we can have to explain this to me. Here we have a plane that's approaching $100 million that isn't flying, wasn't used in Afghanistan, and the 14 senior managers responsible for the program received a combined $1 million in bonuses. How can that be? How do you get a bonus when you screw up? How do you take a million dollars out of the U.S. taxpayers' wallets and give it to 14 managers for a program that spent almost $100 million and doesn't work? We love the men and women who work at the DA. It is tough. I have but a, a few times gone out with, with uh, agents like this and our local law enforcement and watched them go through this. It is dangerous. It is tough. It doesn't get enough pat on, patting on the back. But ladies and gentlemen, we can't waste the American taxpayer dollars to this degree. Should we be paying for confidential informants? I think yes. Should we be giving one Amtrak employee $850 plus thousand dollars to hand over a list of passengers? No. And that taints the entire agency, the reputation of the good men and women who work there. But we have to answer these questions and we want to get some answers to this. So, Uh, we now like to uh, recognize, actually, Mr. Lynch, uh, a gentleman from Massachusetts, for an opening statement. Mr. Lynch, you now recognize. Thank you very much.